In this short video, I am going to show you how to derive Manning equation for steady uniform flow. Let's start from this figure here on top. This is a longitudinal section of a rectangular channel. Uh, so we have channel bed over here, the surface of water over here, and this is the energy grade line. Um, this line, the horizontal line over here, is the datum where elevation is equal to zero, and then you have your elevation head, depth of water, and velocity head. Two things to remember. Number one, we are deriving Manning equation for steady and uniform flow. Steady flow means that the properties of the flow do not change over time, and uniform flow is the flow in which uh, properties of flow do not change over a distance. That's why y over here and y over here in two different sections, they're exactly the same, and velocity head or velocity is exactly the same as well. Okay, so these are two of the assumptions that we are going to consider. The other one is that the channel slope, or S sub zero, S naught, is small. And I'm going to come back to this assumption later. All right, then you can see the cross section of our rectangular channel over here. The depth of water is y, and then the cross sectional area, or cross sectional area of the flow, is equal to A. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to define a control volume. You are familiar with the control volume concept from fluid mechanics. I'm going to define a control volume and then figure out the forces that are acting on that control volume. Perfect. So the control volume is the dashed red line over here. I'm going to redraw the control volume over here to be able to show all the forces acting on it. Okay. So this is the control volume redrawn over here. Now I'm going to show you all the forces that are acting on this control volume. The first type of force acting on the control volume would be hydrostatic force. So hydrostatic force is in this form on the two sides of this control volume as a result of hydrostatic pressure. The force would be the resultant force on the left hand side is F1 and on the right hand side is F2. Notice that the flow direction is in this direction. All right, the other type of force that is acting on this control volume is going to be the friction force. I'm going to show it by F sub little f. This is the friction force as a result of the shear stress. And the last type of force that is acting on this control volume, this control volume is filled with water, right? And water has some weight. So as a result of gravity, you're going to have uh, the weight. Uh, I'm going to show the two components of the weight. One is in this direction and the other one is in this direction, right? So if this angle over here is theta, this would be W sine of theta and this would be W cosine of theta. Perfect. So these are all the forces acting on this control volume. What I'm going to do next is write down momentum equation and plug in all these forces acting on the control volume into the momentum equation. Momentum equation, the general form of momentum equation, tells me that the summation of forces acting on this control volume is equal to net rate at which momentum is transported out of the control uh, volume. So I'm going to write the momentum equation, the um, mathematical representation of momentum equation for you over here. This is summation of forces, summation of external forces, I want to say, acting on uh, the control volume. And this should be equal to summation of momentum out of the system. This is velocity out of the system. And when velocity goes out of the system, this would be the control surface. So summation of all those momentum terms minus summation of mass flow rate times velocity into the system. And this would be momentum into the system. This, these two terms together would be net rate at which momentum is transported out of the system. All right, remember that um, 
our flow is steady and uniform, meaning that velocity that goes out of the system and velocity that goes into the system is exactly the same thing. Also, mass flow rate is exactly the same because density of water is the same and velocity is also the same too. So these two terms can be canceled out. So in other words, I have summation of forces acting on control volume equal zero. All right, so what I want to do right now is to write down the forces that are acting on this control volume. To write that, the first type of force would be the hydrostatic force F1 minus F2, another hydrostatic force. Why do I have a negative sign over here? Because F2 is in the opposite direction. Plus, the weight component would be W sine of theta and minus F sub F, which is the friction force is equal to zero. All right, again, notice that F1 and F2 are exactly the same. Why? Because the depth of water over here and over here, section one and two, are exactly the same thing. So the hydrostatic pressure distribution is the same thing. And also F1 and F2, um, the resultant forces are exactly the same. So these two cancel each other out. Now we'll end up having F sub F is equal to W sine of theta. All right. So now let's go back to this assumption over here. We know that channel slope or S naught, S sub zero is small. That means that this theta is very small. So when theta is very small, I can tell that sine of theta is approximately equal to the slope of the channel. So I can write down this equation in form of W S sub zero. All right, now we have um, this equation. You're going to simplify F sub F and W as much as possible to be able to write this equation in terms of shear stress, velocity, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna start with W. In fluid mechanics, you know that W, or weight of the fluid, is equal to gamma specific weight times volume of the fluid. Gamma, over here, we have water. So gamma is specific weight of water. And uh, volume is the volume of water in the control volume. So I have the cross-sectional area of the control volume. And I have the length of control volume defined for me as L. This is the length of the control volume. So volume is going to be cross-sectional area times length of the control volume. In other words, W would be gamma A times L. Perfect, now I have W over here. I'm gonna focus on F, F sub F. Friction force is due to shear stress on an area that this shear stress is acting. But what area is that? Is that the flow area? Yeah, the answer is no. So let me define a new um, parameter for you. This line that I am sketching right now goes over the wetted perimeter of the channel. In other words, this is the line where water touches the perimeter of the channel, right? I'm gonna call this P wetted perimeter. The units for that are, dimension for that is length, units are meters or feet. Perfect. So this is the wetted perimeter, and then I have the length of my control volume too. So the shear stress is acting on an area that is equal to wetted perimeter times length of the control volume. Now that I have friction force, I can call it equation, let's actually call this equation number one. This is equation number two, and this is equation number three. All right, so if I put equation number, equations number two and three in equation number one, I'll get something like this.
There we go. Okay, so I'm going to write this equation in terms of shear stress. Obviously, two L's in the numerator and denominator cancel each other out, and I'm going to define another variable called R. R is hydraulic radius, and it's defined as area divided by wetted perimeter. So this is called hydraulic radius. All right, so this can be written as these two L's cancel each other out. I have gamma R as sub zero. Okay, so this is the equation for, I'm gonna call it equation number four, to calculate shear stress. Now, from fluid mechanics, you remember another equation for shear stress. That equation was a function of a friction coefficient, function of density, and also a function of velocity to the power two divided by two. So if I equate these two equations, I'm gonna call this equation number five, and then I e equate four and five, what I'm gonna get is gamma r as sub zero is equal to rho is density, Perfect. All right, so I am going to here write this equation, put velocity on the left-hand side of the equation and move everything on the other side. Notice that gamma or specific weight is equal to density times G, right? So instead of specific weight over here, you're gonna put density times G and then velocity would be equal to Perfect. All right, so this equation will give me velocity of the flow, right? Now, this term that I'm going to show it over here, can be written as C, the coefficient, right? So this equation can be simplified and written as velocity is equal to C, R, S sub zero. This is a very well-known equation called Chezy equation. Named after French engineer Chezy, who came up with this equation in 1775, proposed this equation. All right. So there is another well-known engineer called Robert Manning. In 1890, Robert Manning proposed that C is a function of hydraulic radius to the power one over six and n. Hydraulic radius is area, cross-sectional area, divided by wetted perimeter, and n is called roughness coefficient. All right, so he came up with this equation based on the experiment that he did. Now, if you put C into the Chezy equation, you're gonna end up having um, Manning's equation. I'm gonna write the Manning's equation Let's change the color of the marker first. I'm gonna write the Manning's equation over here. So velocity is equal to, instead of C, I'm gonna put this value over there and write it like this. This is Manning's equation in terms of velocity. We all know that Q or flow rate is area times velocity. So I'm gonna uh, multiply area to both sides of this equation. Left hand side would be Q. Right hand side, I'm gonna add an area. Perfect. 
perfect. So remember that this type of Manning's equation is for SI units. What if we use US customary units? If you're using US customary units, instead of having one over here, you will have 1.486 divided by N, Manning's roughness, A, R to the power two over three, S sub zero to the power one over two, for US customary system of units. All right, so this is the derivation of Manning's equation. We are going to talk about application of Manning's equation for steady, steady uniform flow in future videos. Um, the question that you might have right now is, how do we know what is this roughness coefficient? There are tables that are published by United States Geological Survey and in multiple reference books that you can figure out the value of this Manning roughness for different types of channels with different covers. Um, this is the general form of Manning's equation. In next videos, we're gonna learn about how to apply Manning's equation to solve different problems.